What's going on, y'all? Bishop Brigante. Welcome to another episode of Risk and Rewards. This is the show where we talk to your favorite personalities about some of the risks they've taken in their career to get where they are today. And right now, it's an honor. We got one of the most incredible lyricists in the game causing all this trouble. It's all his fault. Duffel bag <laughs> ran. <laughs> What's going on, Ransom? <laughs> Ain't nothing much, man. You know, I'm a troublemaker. It's not, you know what? It's not even your fault. It's like nothing but, nothing but innocent bystander shit just because, you know, you happen to be one of the, one of the greats, one of the most incredible lyricists in the game. You know what I mean? So it's, it's dope. I appreciate that, brother. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and watching, you know, first of all, I got to say, I don't know. I don't know how you can say you're just warming up, but you've literally been pressing your foot on the neck of the game back to back right now, back to back with, with, with seven, then, 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 um, heavy heavy is the head. Um, bro, what's going on, bro? Like, is there, is this pandemic getting to you or you're just like, yo, I got a snap. Stop. I got a snap Um, right now. I'm just making music, man. I'm just, I'm in a good space right now. So, and um, yeah, I wanna, I wanna, uh, I'm challenging myself. I'm challenging myself. And also, you know, I feel, you know, I feel slighted a little bit. Word? What do you mean? I don't know. It's something I make up in my head to keep me going. So it gets me up out of, out of the bed in the morning. It's I make working. up, yeah, I make up shit in my head. So I feel like I'm not getting the respect I deserve. Man, um, I love that. I love that this, like, you know, the current climate of conversation, you know, has, I got to thank you. I got to thank guys like RJ Payne, Royce, Crook, like the whole Griselda. I feel like it's the golden era again. I said that in a tweet the other day. I said, I feel like we're back in the golden era where lyricism is at the front originalities at the front, competitive, you know what I mean? Like, this is what we loved growing up that made us become MCs, and it's back. You know, I still got love for any of the, you know, the other styles of, you know, hip hop and the younger generations that, you know, they found their wave and their, you know, their their their, their flow, but it's the golden era again. Right. That's I feel what I like feel. It, I feel like it's room for all that shit. Yeah. Like my I think my beef was if I had any beef at all, it was, you know, like, all right, why does this shit why does one type of music have to dominate? Right. So why does why does it have to always be fucking melodic shit? Like there's space for everybody. That's how I feel. So now that we are kind of bullying our space back, you know, like all right, fuck all that shit. That shit cool. Like everything deserves a space. Especially if it's good, if it's good music. So I, I, I'm one of those type folks. Like I'm not, I'm not an old head. Like, oh man, I don't like that shit or what. I'm not one right. of those. Dudes. If it's hot, it's hot. I don't give a fuck what it is. But there is a space for what the fuck we do too. And it should be. I, I feel like it should be equally. Yeah. You know, placed in these. You know, because, man, like, especially if you're a part of the building blocks of it. You know what I mean? Like, of, of, of upper echelon lyricism i'm like yo i don't know Look, so I- don't, people need to not go with the, a lot of the narratives too like he's young against old and all this other shit yeah. that's just a narrative because you'll be surprised these young brothers they listening man like you'd be surprised will be hitting me man yeah. and be like yo and not too long ago um what's what's, a, what's i just seen him on the fucking rolling loud stage and shit um, what was his name? I forgot his name, but he's real fucking famous and shit. Little, <laughs> yeah, little something. One of the motherfuckers. All right. He hit me like, you know, he popped in my DM like, "Yo, man, your shit crazy." I'm like, this this motherfucker's. I know he's like 19. What the fuck is his nigga name? I forgot his name. But um, he like, "Yo, your shit is crazy, man." I'm like. You listen to fucking Ransom. He was like, yo, hell yeah. He was like, every day in the tour van. Like, that's what the fuck we Crazy. listen to. So you'd be surprised, man. It's, you'd be surprised, bro. You know, you know, you know, it's one thing that I think the general um, public doesn't understand. 
even the melodic and and in comparison um simpler styles of music that shit is not easy to make either <laughs> everybody thinks that it's like oh you know you know the, the 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 upper echelon lyricism is like really difficult to do right but then so is being really simple and melodic and catchy you know what i'm saying like they're both really you know talented uh talents to have you know what i mean trust me i tried so yeah no it's not that's, easy yeah i just rather wrap my ass off yeah. <laughs> I just yeah. that. bro you are, are you is this your third third project in 2021 crime you got crime scenes well crime scenes technically dropped in 2020 but then i got into some legal problems with the stove guard record not Ooh. with him not with him with the sample right so we had to re I had to re uh, put it out or whatever put it out in 2021 right so i don't really count that but yeah um but yeah if you wanted to say that yeah, it's the third one and i and i'm shooting for i'm shooting for three more three more yeah bro <laughs> are you not playing this year that was that's yeah. going to be five projects in 2021 yeah Unless somebody try to, unless, I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 that's what I want to do. I already got a cut. They're done. I, they're, they're already done. So it's like, it'll be just timing. And then, you know, I have artists too. I got artists I'm trying to put out too. So it's like a schedule type of things. So if, if you don't get three, it's because of scheduling. Right, right, right. I want to yeah. I, I ask you a question because, um, just because of the, the way the conversation is going. But um, how what what's your take on, like the conversation, because I, I mean, I saw when Nico initially brought up the conversation with RJ Payne and Ransom being the best two out currently. Mm -hmm. And then I felt that he was opening up a dialogue to, to have a conversation. And I thought mm -hmm. that's, I thought that's what it was and it was healthy. What was mm -hmm. your take on it when you first started seeing, you know, everything kind of, you know, ending up on Instagram live and tweets here, this and that. Like, what was your take? I was like, okay. Like I was, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm always going to want to say I'm the best. So you put, you give me a, a platform to say I'm the best. I'm going to say it every time. So, and, and Nickel, he know that, he know how I am for years. You know what I'm saying? For years, he, he, he know how I am. But, um, yeah, I thought it was cool. I like competition. Right. I like, uh, I like that shit, man. It pushes so you, me. Yeah, you didn't feel like it was like there was anything. I didn't think there was anything fucked up I, about the it conversation. Weird. It wasn't weird to me. Yeah. It was pretty cool. It kind of got weird once the outside factors got in, but. Right. It, it was normal. I'm used to that type of shit. Oh, you the best? Who the fuck? You? Oh, oh, shit. I, yeah, I'm the best. Like, yeah. I'm used to that type of, You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and Royce knows that. So that's why he, he knew that we wouldn't. Well, he knew that I wouldn't take offense to it because I'm I'm ready to tell you I'm the best and why. Right, right, right. So I yeah, feel like, I, I feel like he's he's, you know, he's he's good for motivating people and wanting to get, you know, just keep everybody sharp and on their game, man. I I see what he was saying. Like, okay, you're yeah. the best. You're the best. All right, how? Like, you know what I'm saying? So. And I'm I'm ready to I was re I'm I'm the best because you hear what the fuck I'm doing like exactly. <laughs> you hear what the fuck I'm doing you know what I mean that's why I'm the best listen so yeah. you know, yeah that's that was my thing but you know me me and Royce talk all the time behind the scenes so I already knew I already knew so yeah 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 yo I want to one more thing um I'm gonna I, I want to double back to um I just had my homie on here Riggs bro yeah, I. I'm gonna I'm tell you about this. When I first heard you on um, Poisonous, mm -hmm. bro, what what did, bro? <laughs> you been going crazy for a minute, Rand. You've been going crazy for a long time, man. But Poisonous is one of my favorite ones. Now you, I believe you're on Wake Ups, right? Yeah, yeah, you're on Wake Ups, yeah. bro. That's God, that's my guy right there, Riggs. I like, I like what they're doing over there. Yeah, the whole cloth is is dope, man. I, I, how did how did y'all like connect with with Riggs? I don't know, it's been I've been known for I've not been dealing with him for a minute. Yeah, at least at least five six years. So anytime you know, 
and I just liked the way they they fucking rap. So he was, he you know he wanted to do a feature. I'm like fuck it. This was like five six years ago, and ever since then it's just been like when he hit me when he you know if, if he need me I'm there, and um and he was on um he was actually on crime scenes too. So you know when I hit him he there. So yeah I fuck with them. Much respect to what they doing. Yeah, man, I got a lot of love for Riggs, man. He he he's gonna be on the uh, he. We got an episode with him on the Risk to Rewards too, man. Very right. very intelligent uh, young man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Very very focused. Um, all right, Duffo. Let's get into the. Let's get into what we what we here for. Let's get it. You know what I'm saying? I need to know. You got to tell me, Ransom. What is one risk? that you've taken, whether it be in your career, whether it be in life, period, what was a risk that you took that had the, a, a positive outcome? Yeah. Come um, on. Yeah, I would have to say um, a risk was doing, doing music, starting, like just putting everything aside to do it full time. And believe, it's a risk to believe, because it gotta work. Right. <laughs> you know, work. What the fuck you gonna do? So the I took a huge risk, saying like, man, fuck it, this is what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna I, I'm gonna put all my attention, all my time, all my energy into this shit, and I'm gonna make it work. That shit was a risk. <laughs> you know, and, what and I'm it, yeah, and, and like, the come up is crazy. Man, Mom Duke's like, where the money at? You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't making no fucking money. You ain't no, you ain't no rapper. You ain't making no mo- money. Like go get a job. Nah, the risk is the sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? People, people don't know you have to sacrifice a lot to get what you want. You got it. There's there's no love without pain. That's that's how I look at it. There's no there's no you can't get what you want without struggle. You can't do it. Unless it was right. gifted to you, it was, you know, you could have something gifted to you or you could be born into something and then it's still struggle. Cause who's to say that's what you wanted. So if you, if you want something, you got to sacrifice it and it got to be, a, it's, it's got to be a risk to it. And what, it do you, be- what, what do you think was like one of the, like putting, putting everything on the line and, and, you know, re- just believing in, in you, your ability and, and making this career as an MC, what do you feel was the reoccurring obstacle that you faced taking that risk? Even though it was a come up and you know there's gonna be struggle there, what what was the reoccurring thing that, you know? Um, not, not getting the results that I thought I should be getting. Mm. That, was the re- that was the reoccurring theme throughout my whole career like damn i thought this was gonna change everything right it's not and then they'll have it again and again oh, i thought this was going to change everything but it didn't i, I got, thought this was going to be it i thought this one was the one and it and it kept and it, it's going to happen it's going to happen disappointment so let's just say that disappointment is the reoccurring theme when you're trying to do what the fuck you got to do as, as far as like this a lofty goal such as the goal I got. Right. And there's, and, but it's, it's how you take those disappointments and learn from them. Right. I mean, they they really it. like people really think that shit is just overnight. They don't, they don't understand, you know, all of the, all of the little intricacies of like they don't the get struggles it, and the work and the time and being but away from the family, touring, all that shit. When everything's good when everything's good, everything's good. You right. have to find out about yourself when when it's dark. Mm. When it, that's when the stars shine the brightest. When it's when there ain't no when there ain't when there's no light. That's when it's dark and it's hard. When things are hard, mm. that's how you. That's when you find out who the fuck you are. Like damn, all right, what the fuck you gonna do, man? That's when you find out about yourself. And that's like like you said, when it gets difficult, or when you get those disappointments, you find out who you are by overcoming those those difficulties. That's the only way. Because when it's good, everybody's good. 
Everybody's smiling in your face. Everybody's friendly. Everyone's picking up your phone calls. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I understand that. But I also understand when it's dark, I get, that's when I, that's when I thrive. That's when I thrive. I, I'm made for it. Working best under pressure. I'm made for it. That's what I do. Darkness. Yo, it's real. Like that's that's some real shit, bro. Like, I love people it. Don't, people, you really have to. You really have to. You have to experience that to really, you know, to really find yourself and and, and to be self aware. Is to really, you know, the pre the most pressures is is are, are you gonna crack or are you gonna overcome? And you you become successful when you start to embrace it or even <laughs> enjoy it. Shit. Right. Like, I, I feel weird when it's, when everything's going great. It's right. Like, oh. <laughs> Something's right. wrong. Something's Something about, wrong. Something, something's about to happen. Yeah. Something, it's about to get fucked up. Real, let me prepare. Let me get, you know what I mean? Let me get mentally prepared for what's about to happen. Yeah, my mother, my mother always told me that if you ever feel like you're having too much fun, you probably are. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely. Yep. Um, yep. That was some that was some advice that uh, I always kept in my mind from my mom's about good, that. good advice. Yeah, I told my son too. I'm like, hey, if you, ever feel, if you ever feel like you're having too much fun, probably are. You probably are. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, that's dope. Okay, let's flip the coin. This is where it gets this is where it gets crazy because you know I mean I know we we all got these ones, but let's flip mm -hmm. the coin and talk about a risk that you took that wasn't the one. Wasn't a good come up. I was like, "Oh shit, here we go." <laughs> and being as being as you know about darkness, then I took a lot of bad risks. Man. I have to say the one, the one risk that I, when I got older, I started like, "What the fuck? That made no sense." Selling drugs, man. That's that was that was a fucking that was a dumbass risk. <laughs> if I, I, I got older, I thought about it like, yeah, you know, the, the risks and the rewards were too, too disparaging a difference. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. I, I mean, even if you're a successful drug dealer, like where I was at, where I'm from. Right. Making a couple, you know, you, you, you 10,000, 20,000 a week, maybe. And that's it. You got to be, you know, 30, 50,000. Like, okay. But then when you get caught, you know the difference. Like, oh, damn, I got to do what? For how long? This is a fucked up risk. And, and you know, I wasn't I wasn't at Pablo Escobar either. Right. So, you know, I made a couple of dollars, but it wasn't worth the uh, the ending result. Wasn't worth it. Wow. Yeah, prison, prison. No, nah, it's not worth it. That was the biggest risk. Man, and you know what? And I mean, even 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 if you think about it, man, like sometimes that like that that's it's almost like the one of the first hustles that you know is 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 right presented. in front of you. It's presented to you. Yeah. It's presented to you, right? And yeah, man, it's it's that scale is lopsided. Hard not to take it, you too, because it seems it's a big misconception about selling drugs that it's easy. It's not easy. No. And never was, never will be. I thought, you know, that's the you know what's easy, going to work. Compared to compared to selling drugs, <laughs> yeah. it is way easier, man. No anxiety. No anxiety. Absolutely, waking up at like it just it doesn't feel good. I don't give a fuck how much money you're making. It don't feel good. Like now that I look back at it, like I never had a grand old time. Like, well, I got crack in my pocket. Woo. -hoo. Right, right, right. You know, what you know what I mean? I wasn't in a, you know, you just got to, it's a certain stigma or aura that comes with that. You can't shake it. I don't care fuck how much money you got. I don't care how many cars or the jewelry or how much clothes. You don't feel good. Even, and you know what? Even if you're not the, the one using, right? You're the, you're the one supplying. Mm -hmm. That becomes an addiction itself too. Yeah, absolutely. You know I mean? And it's... Yeah. It's all smoke and mirrors. It is, man, because you think it's easy. When you're doing it, you're thinking it's easy. That shit's no. You think back at it, that shit was hard, man. It was hard. You got It was. It was hard, man. But you you don't know when you when you're going through it. You don't know how hard it is. Right. You think 
work, you think work is hard. I'm not going to, I'm not going to work. I'd rather stand on this corner and risk my life. That's easy. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. So nah, I would, I tell, I tell, and I'm not a preacher, but if I had to, if I could get a hold of every kid here, I would tell you, man, listen, if you ain't Pablo Escobar, and even if he was, you probably shouldn't be taking that risk. Bro, there's, there, there's only been like a couple <laughs> handfuls of, of people that even reached that type of, you know what I mean? That type of peak. Yeah, if you're not, I mean, listen, come from where we come from, you're not gonna be Pablo Escobar. Right. You're gonna be Nick, the, the, your, your peak is fucking, you know, Nikki Bonds and, uh, you know, and, and the likes of those type of people, that's your peak. You're not, you're not growing this shit. You know what I'm saying? You're not yeah. growing. It. You're not the plug like you. And I don't care how many. Oh, I got the plug. The plug. Right, right. You're not the plug. You're not the plug, bro. You're not the plug. It's, <laughs> yeah. crazy. it's crazy. Everybody seems to be the plug. Yeah, you're not. Everybody, the plug. everybody's the plug, but nobody's the dealer. Nobody, nobody's the dealer. <laughs> okay, look. I'm truthful, man. I'm living my skin. Man, I I sold drugs, and I was not the plug. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't even close to the plug. You know what I'm saying? I'm smart enough to know that shit. That's you know? crazy. That's crazy. Definitely. It's super glorified too, man. It's like, and 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 that that's that's the other part of it that makes it where it's like, young impressionable people, yeah, yeah, yeah. come yeah. into it and they're like, yo. This is what I think it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's in the music. That's why you know the the older I got, the more responsible I got with my my words and and raps. Yeah, I'm saying it's still you know you still want to entertain, but it's a, it's a it's still a subtle way you could do it without glorifying the shit. You know what absolutely. I'm saying? Absolutely, absolutely. I try. Yeah. I try to. My, I try to. I try my best not to glorify violence and and um. And drugs and drug use and selling and and um, derogatory shit towards women and shit like that. I try my best to stay away from that shit. I, I'm just gonna tell you like all my shit gonna be based in truth, right? At least, you know what I'm saying. My shit gonna always gonna be based in some type of reality. Some type of reality. Like these motherfuckers be saying shit that don't even ain't even real. Right, right, right. It's not even realistic. Keys off a boat, and you ain't never, you ain't never, you ain't go to prison. You ain't never you ain't, been on a canoe. Yeah, you never been on a boat. Oh, got keys on a boat. I got, I went to Columbia. I got the, like, <laughs> I mean, it's wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's it's wild shit. I'm not saying that you can't um, embellish and right. use. It. You know, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like. It has to be it has to be some type of happy medium where you're like, okay, I did this shit, but then look, there's a stigma that comes with it. There's something bad there's there's a bad side of that. There's a it's there's not, a few there's a few guys that are really good at talking that talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. And, like and, and you know, and we fuck with them and 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 we like the shit. But I mean it's there's an oversaturation of liars as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't like problem. Like you got your pusher T's and you got your Bennies. And your Conways, I don't like the they're, and they're crazy with it. Yeah, but have like motherfuckers who just started rapping and just like I'm. This is what I'm gonna. I got keys on the plane, and my man, you just picked up the pen, man. Relax. Yeah, yeah. Go 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 through your rapper stages, man. The steps of this shit. Oh, I'm a cocaine rapper. That's that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Motherfucker. Motherfuckers a nerd or what? You know, I like to say nerd, but a motherfuckers <laughs> regular guy. Yeah, square. Regular guy, square. Regular yeah. guy, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But you gotta live, live Be your truth. truth. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, motherfucker be fresh. Regular guy picks up a pen and he's a cocaine rapper and he sells keys on a boat and all this other shit. No, and he's, and he's selling nickel bags of Reggie. Not even. Not even. <laughs> Not even. Uh, so I'm. I don't. You know. I don't like that shit. Then it, you know. I don't like. I don't like where niggas categorize mainstream and they 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 have the same faults towards mainstream, right? 
Oh, everything sounds the same. What about what we doing? There's motherfuckers that want to sound like us too. Right, right. And then it becomes where everything sounds the same. Everything's cocaine. Everything's rapidy rap or everything. You know, you know what I'm saying? Strapped up, I'll kill you or whatever. Right. Like it's there's like there's like a few little you know common ones that people think they have to do when they get into the game. Yeah, I tell I tell artists that ex uh, advice, and I say, yo, you have to separate yourself from the pack. How do you do that? Well, how do I do that? You gotta be yourself. Only you can be you, motherfucker. It's the easiest to, answer. Just, just be yourself. Be, <laughs> no one can be you. Remember, remember, remember when hip hop was like that, where you you couldn't lie because it Bro. was just a part oh, of. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> had to be you couldn't sound truth. like somebody else. Like Kane didn't sound like Slick Rick. Um, Coogee rap never sounded like uh, I don't know Master Ace or whoever. Like this. Nobody sounded like anybody because it was original and you mm -hmm. just and you couldn't lie. You right. couldn't lie. I think you could lie, but you would be held accountable. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, held accountable. Accountability was big, yeah. It's not there no more. No one has to be held accountable for their words anymore, and that's why you have people talking crazy. That's why you have these I'm not I'm not naming no names, but you got these these little characters that are created and blown into like mega superstardom. And then certain moral compasses are like, like it feels like the, the moral compass is just gone. It's gone yeah. in, 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 in certain parts of uh, well, entertainment now and, and in the world or whatever, but. It's gone. Yeah. But, but thank God that again, thank God guys like y'all that are the leaders are setting the example again, man, and and it's and it's coming to the forefront again. We need that shit. We need people to be critical thinkers again, because when I was when I was little, and I was listening to hip hop, and I was listening to Cube, and I was listening all the shit that I listened to, I learned there was stuff to learn from it. I, look, hip hop raised me, so facts. So I don't, I, I couldn't I couldn't imagine how it would be having this generation of hip hop raise a generation of kids. Scary. You know what I'm saying? Like hip hop raised me when I left the house. Like you think about it. Your mom, your mother don't know you. Your mother doesn't really know you. Right. Because you're faking you're you're not being yourself in front of your mother. Or your parents. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're not gonna if, if you you're not gonna drink forties and smoke weed and talk shit and curse and, and carry on here. Yeah, and, and and deal with chicks in the staircases and all. You're not gonna do that with your mom or your parents. So right. they don't know you, right? So when you leave that house, you're you're you. Your friends know you more than your um than your parents. Mm. So when you your house, they're no their parenting is out the window. We hit that block or wherever you, whatever you wherever you at, and you put the music on, and the people that you're listening to are molding you. Mm. They're molding you. I remember I remember that. I remember dressing like a, a rapper or wearing my hair like a rapper. I had to shit like Kane, like the, the high top and you know? Yep. You dressed, you looked, you talked like them. So I do believe in <laughs> using music as a weapon against a certain yeah, demographic of people. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I, I, that, that, that shit exists to me. Yeah, we experienced it. Yeah, it's a real thing. Like, oh, how, how else how else can you reach a, a well, how, how, how can you reach a, a large mass of people and um, change their perspective on things? A good way is through music. It's the number one way. I think it's the number, number one way. It's the number one. Yeah. From, from what they see and from what they hear. So if I go on TV and I see some, well, I see love and hip hop, and then I put on, and then I go in the house and put on some Uzi Vert or whoever, you know, not to just, not to single him out. Right. What type of, who am I going to really be? Who am I going to turn into? I mean, at some point you got to be able to separate. But when you're a child, that shit helps. It molds you, man. Like, right. Like, in, in, your, in your impressionable years, you know what I mean? You're developing but, years. 
Yeah, of course. Yeah, fuck it. You had uh, you know, back when you always had a, yeah, you had a NWA or you had a motherfucker that had a music that you like. Yo, I'm about to go fuck somebody or shoot somebody over this shit. But then you also had a PE, right? The enemy, you had a De La Soul. You had balance. It's a balance. You know what I'm saying? Yo, is that 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 is that right there is one of the biggest things I think missing in hip hop right now. Balance is balance. Because yeah. we had the Tribe Called Quest, we had the NWAs, we had, you know, for every for every Ice Cube, there was a there there was a Chuck D. You know what I'm saying? For every And then Ice Cube turned into Chuck D. Right, right. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So Crazy. yeah. Uh, yeah, this the balance is gone. It's either it's either one way or the other. Well, like I said, we got we things seem to be coming back around. And you know what I mean? I love how the discussion is, is, is again. Yeah, I wait, yeah. There's, there's lyrical motherfuckers, but what they saying though. Right. Like, like I said, the content has helped shape people. So, I, I, you know, motherfucker probably be like, oh, you're a gangster rapper. What are you talking about? If you think that you don't listen to me. Right. I think that's what the fuck I'm talking about. There's, there's messages in my music and my words. There's definitely messages. For every time I say I'm about to do something violent, I turn around and say some shit that'll lift you. Just if that just listen. Help. Yeah, just listen. Just listen you know? to it. I, I'm still trying to entertain you, but I'm still, you know, like, oh, yo, you know, hit you with the bars. I'm talking. I can say something about a gun or do something violent with a gun, but then I, I flip the coin and and, and lift you. Right. You know? you know, your darkest hour is only sixty minutes. I say something to to kind of boost you back up after I just said some bullshit to you. Right. <laughs> I feel no. guilty. I feel guilty when I do it. That's why I always balance it. I balance mm. it. If I say some wild shit, which I like to say, you know, it sounds good to me. I like that's the music I like. So I will say some shit pertaining some violence. Yeah. And it's always going to be based in either a metaphor. I'm not just going to say I'll come and shoot you in your head. It's always going to be like some metaphor or entendre that's- It's going to be witty. It's going to be- It's going to be witty. There's going to be effort in that shit. Art. There's going to be some art with it. Right. It's be pure violence. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Unadulterated fucking violence and shit. Murder and mayhem. Yeah, no, I'm not doing that. But even when I do that, even when I talk violence or drugs or anything, I always spin back and try to lift you up with a quote. You know what I'm saying? That's going to lift- like oh shit yeah that shit was deep and that's some that's that right there some it's just some stand up shit that's how you know you know what I mean that you if I'm you can double you yeah. it's it's good it's it's let me ask you a question man who I know I know there's like I know there's the usual suspect but can you tell me a couple people that maybe inspire you whether it be lyrically or even just musically or anything like who who inspires ransom. Because because I, the reason why I'm asking you is because the deeper the deeper I dive in the and the and and the more content you put out, the more I I'm I'm realizing that because I've always I've always thought you were incredible from back in the day. So, but like the energy you want right now is you're not fucking around like whatsoever. So. Is there is there some is there anybody that kind of inspires your pen or you know keeps you on keeps you on you know that 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 vibe where you're like okay you know what I fuck with this and this is the kind of stuff that inspires me anybody like that? No, I ain't. I I, I could lie. <laughs> I could lie and say there is not that there's not a, a whole bunch of fucking fantastic music out there. I'm not saying that there's a whole bunch of crazy shit out there. Just nothing that's gonna be nothing's gonna make me run and go like yo, I gotta I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? Right personally, right now, I'm making the music I love. Yeah. So I listen to my shit because I like I make music for me. So I wanna you know what I mean? Me and my fans, they I feel like my fans are like me. Talk that king shit, right? <laughs> whoever likes me, whoever likes my shit, gotta kinda have a different type of personality. You gotta be have some type of personality trait that I got. Cause if you listen to me, you gotta it, it just, we connect, all my, me and my fans connect. So I make m music for us, you know what I'm saying? I make music for us and, and, and like-minded people like how the, how the fuck I think. I make music for like-minded people like me. Okay. So I, 
I inspire myself, bro. I inspire myself. I really do. I, I listen to the last shit and be like, oh, no, nah, I got, oh, I'm about to kill that shit. I'm about to kill that shit. That's nothing. Man, like, you, so are, cool. you are some real fucking king, king in the castle shit right now. I fuck with it. I'm I trying to run shit. It. I'm trying to run shit. Like, so even, even like the discussion was like, oh, we, you know, the whole I'm the best discussion. Well, you know, why are you the best? I was really, when I say I'm the best, I'm talking about, I'm not just, I'm not, I'm not talking about Lupe fiasco. I'm not talking about none of, I'm talking about, I want to be the best, like Jay-Z. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that best. Tupac, Biggie. What I'm talking about. I'm not talking about, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Like mm. Roy, Black Thought. These are fucking giants. You know what I'm saying? Nas and like those, those are those are who that's I want to be up there. I think you're there. And I, I, I and I'm glad that like on a bigger scale of the conversation that now you are there in the conversation. I feel like you've been there, but now that the conversation is the way social media works, and now it's just reaching a bigger mass, that you're you're in this discussion in, in a in a like you're supposed to be. I feel like you're just supposed to be there. And and yeah, you're Every, like you can't find a conversation right now where they're not talking about ransom. You can't. It's start. It's starting to change. I still, you know, I'm always gonna feel slighted, man. That's just me. So I, I feel like, yeah, it's not there yet. We ain't there yet. The work ain't, ain't done there. yet. Nah, I don't feel like I'm in every. I don't feel like I'm in every conversation. I don't. Well, I, every I conversation like, I keep having, you're there. <laughs> I feel like I. I feel like I should be though. Anyone, I don't give a fuck who you talking about. Yeah, like I want to, I want to be in a conversation when they, where they say, uh, well, I like little baby, I like the baby, <laughs> I like ransom, like you know what I mean? Like I'm, I like Jay Z. Like I want to be in those fucking conversations. Right, right. And until I, and, and I'm not. So until I am, I'm gonna keep fucking brutalizing, brutalizing, standing on, they, standing on their necks. Yes, I'm a, I'm a yeah, man. Listen. Y'all, and I say I'm warming up. I really mean it. Yeah, you saw me reply to that shit. I was like, what? Bro. I mean it. Bro. <laughs> and you, you say you got three in the tuck? And I'm working on a like an album album. Wow. There's an end game to this. Me and Royce was talking about that. But there's an end game. So I'm working towards the end game. Like I, I'm I'm floored by the response I'm getting from these track, these the shit I'm putting out, floor. Right, the, right. I know that's not what I'm. The end game. So I'm like, okay, y'all, y'all fuck with this. Ah, uh, so like the blocks, so the so it's working. Yeah, like the, yeah, the working, steps are, yeah. are getting you there. Yeah, I I didn't think it was gonna. I honestly didn't think it was gonna be received the way these are. Uh, Bro, products. I wasn't even. I wasn't even fully. I wasn't even like done with seven. And you was like, because I remember I hit you up because I, you be, you know, schedules or whatever, but I hit you up before seven was going to drop. I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, let's get this risk and worship popping. And then you were like, all right, cool. But you you went on vacation or whatever, birthday, yeah. whatever. And then, bro, it was, I didn't even turn my head. And all of a sudden, heavy is the head. I'm like, oh, like, I didn't think, I didn't think seven was, I didn't think, I'm just like, yo, let me get these, these songs out. Let me get this, get them out. Just bro, you, 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 you're being crazy humble right now, bro. You're I'm snapping humble. right now. I'm, I'm not, I'm not humble. <laughs> I'm not. I don't know, maybe, no, not, not humble, modest. Modest. Yo, that's no, that's what, I, that's what I thought. I thought that it was just like a warm up. I'm like, yeah, let me throw this out so I get a little traction before. <laughs> well, Cause I already had it scheduled. Like, ah, oh, this is seven gonna happen. And then, and then boom, I'm gonna hit you with, Heavy the head, then boom, then boom, then boom. I already had it, so I didn't. I ain't. I had no idea it was gonna be received that well. So, well, I'm 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 happy for you, man. I'm happy that that uh that everything's beyond the expectations you had. You know what I'm saying? That's that's dope. No, that's fire. That's fire, man. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I know what the, I know what I I realize what I'm doing. Like I know the music I'm making and. And who I'm making it for, and I know what it sounds like, so I know it's like, all right, they gonna fuck with this. But I, you know, to the as far as like being on the charts and shit like that, I'm like, okay, I take that 
I'm independent. It's fully independent. So it's like you don't expect those things. Yeah. Well, we're seeing that a lot now, though. We're seeing, yeah, you know, yeah. we're seeing guys like Banks yep. pulling up out of nowhere. You know, Great. Royce always been independent. You know mm. what I mean? Independence is the way to go. Do you, do you even think that artists even really need labels anymore? I don't think so either, man. Especially oh. in especially in the the internet age and and all that and how easily accessible it is to put music out and stuff like that. I, I, I feel well, like that aspiration is silly now. There's our uh, pros and cons to it. More cons than pros, but right. Uh, you really got to know what you're getting into. I feel like if you know what you're getting getting into, you can manipulate it. Mm. How many kids know? You, they want you 16, 15, 14, 17 years old. You don't know. Right. You know, but if you know, you can manipulate the situation. You can. You just got to know. You got to know when they give you in advance what that is and not to blow that bread and, 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 and do something with it. You know what I'm saying? You got to right. know. If you don't know, then. Don't fall just, for the first class flights in the uh, or, or the fucking or the or the jets. Yeah, you got to pay that back. Private planes and shit. Yeah, don't fall for that. They want you in the red. So once you know, once you understand that, like, okay, I know they want me in the red. Let me not be in the red. <laughs> and you'll be, you could, you could manipulate that situation. If you want to be a fucking star, you could, there's certain ways you could, you know, they could help towards that. Like, you know what right. I'm saying? I'm, I'm probably not going to be fucking uh, Ariana Grande. Or, I'm not probably going to be big like that. Right. But, you know, if I wanted that, if I was 16, 17 years old and I understood what the fuck I was doing, yeah, I would, could I, would I, I could man, I could manipulate that. Like, all right, I'll take this deal. Matter of fact, I don't want no advance. You know, right. Keep that advance. I'm mean, gonna be staying in the black for a little bit. <laughs> for a little bit. We stay in the black. Keep that advance. Let me get let me let me get some of my music. Let me keep some of my music. I feel like we need I feel like we need like we need like a course or something like that. You know how they have Should the be. master classes and shit? Could be. We need something like that for the young. They don't want generations. You. They don't want you that. They don't want you to learn that. Right. They they, they want to block that. Uh, of course. How could they make their millions of dollars if if we know what the fuck's going on? It's just possible. So yeah, I, I wish I could you know find. I think when I'm done, done, done. I, I'm I, I could. That's something I could look into, like a course, mm. uh, teaching kids. Yo, man, watch what you signing, man. You know, understand, but not watch, understand what, what's, what you're getting into. And you could, and if that's the road you want to choose, you can. And always have a lawyer. Always Use your have. lawyer. Pay for the lawyer. Your own lawyer, not their Yeah, lawyer. paperwork is crazy. Hey, I've seen some slick paperwork, man. And then it's somebody... Always, look, you know, it's, it's always going to be slick. There's no way you're getting around that, right? Yeah. They're going to... But what I was taught is... Tell them to keep their money. Always work on the on the percentage. Just better your percentage. Keep hmm. the money. Give me a better percentage. That's it. That's what I was taught. And that's what I do. So any deal I'm working on, I want a better percentage. I don't want no money. That's fire. Yeah, it's, so it, it needs to be it needs to be said more often. It yeah. needs to be said more often. So Damn, man, you 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 dropping gems today. Yeah, I just want to, you know. The duffel bag full of gems today. Enlighten. Let's let's enlighten these folks. Absolutely. So people can make money, man. Look, you are getting seventy thirty. Why not work out something better? Seventy five twenty five. Eighty twenty. How about how about ninety ten? Right, right. Just work on a better percentage. Man. Don't take no money, man. Hard to say if you broke. If you if you if you fucked up, of course. You take the money and you and you know what just. Don't take what you it. need. Yeah, take what you need take and what don't you need. Don't blow your money, man. It's like credit cards, bro. It's like credit cards. When you as soon as, yeah. as soon as you turn a certain age, they start throwing it at you. Yeah, because they know. They know. Fuck yeah. your life up. Fuck your life well, up. They want you in the red. <laughs> they want you in the red. So because you're always gonna owe them. You're always gonna owe. Right. They want you to always owe. So yeah, the labels, once I understand what they're doing, it's cool. But you don't you don't need them. Um, to make to get rich, you know, definitely not. But if you want to be a star and and all that, if you want all the other shit that comes with it, 
You can manipulate just know, it. You can, just, you do it. Just know what you're doing. That's all. Yeah. Educate yourself. Educate yourself with everything you're doing, but especially that. Yo, let me ask you one more random question here because I was just, I've, been, I, I've heard a lot of conversation about you know, established rappers possibly jumping in the ring. What's your yeah. thoughts on battle rap? And the I, because when Royce was on Risk and Rewards, we were, you know, he said, I encourage anybody that has lyrical ability to at least do it once. What do you think about established artists jumping in in the battle rap world? Mm, what I think about it, huh? I mean, I wouldn't do it, but um, how come you wouldn't do it? I don't think my personality and, and what I'm trying to accomplish, I don't think that translates to that stage or that platform. Mm. Um, yeah, no, I, I just personally, the way I am, doesn't, it's never going to translate to that. And I'm a okay. huge fan. I'm a huge fan of, of what they do. So they'll tell you like uh, I, I know a lot of them I talk to a lot of them so and I'm fans of a lot of them so yeah I'm I'm a huge fan but I don't feel like what I do translates to that and they'll they'll disagree like oh but you got bars and shit but that's not what I'm I'm using the bars to get to a point right the end game yeah the end game I got a story it's a story and I'm telling or a message that I'm trying to deliver whether you get it or not it's, it's up to you but I don't think I don't I don't think I I I'm I'm a calm person. I don't you know I'm not I can't see myself fucking doing that. <laughs> you got um, any favorite? You got any favorites? Yeah, um, I, I fuck with Danny Myers is one of entertains me. Danny Myers entertains his his, his punches his and the way he approaches. I, I like and I like the fact that he loves that shit. Oh yeah, he loves he loves uh yeah. he loves I love that the shit. fact that he loves that shit. You know, and, and I like Nitty. I like the I like the I like I pretty much like everybody, man. N Nitty's an alien, bro. Yeah, he's crazy. Shout out Hami, bro. Like I, I tell you right now, Rum Nitty, I there's never been a time when I was when I was, I was like, what the what the fuck? Nitty's he's an crazy. alien, bro. He, he, did you see the battle with him and Geechee? Yeah, that was crazy. That was a classic. I fuck with Geechee too. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, that was a that was a good one. That was a good one. You yeah, ever go? Was... You ever go to some of these events? Nah, I hate people. <laughs> you don't like large crowds? No, I never did. Never yeah. did. Won't catch me at Rolling Loud, brother. Rolling Loud? No. You won't catch me at Rolling Loud. No. Wow. If you Not perform. If you yeah, perform, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean, like it's like just like hanging out and shit. Right, right, right. I get it. I get uh, it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like I'm not against uh, a, a, a artist or, or an established artist or a signed artist. I'm not against them getting on stage and and doing anything. I ain't nothing wrong with that because I'm a fan. But I'm not gonna do it. And I've been approached. But... Word, huh? Yeah, I've been approached. Anybody that anybody specific they offered you? Or was it was like was it another industry person or was it yeah. a, another established artist or was it a battle rapper? Well, I know ARP approached me. Um, ARP. ARP be slick with it. He be he be hitting up the killers, huh? I like yeah. our ARP's. Uh, he be he be he be making his rounds with all the killers, trying to get him in. Who do you, who do you offer you? He didn't offer anyone, but um, I know I know who he didn't say who I was. But I know who. But he he doesn't know that I know. <laughs> Did that other person know and tell you? Nope. I'm just privy to a lot of information. Mm. So yeah, I know I know who it was supposed to be. I won't say because you gotta tell me offline. Yeah, you gotta tell me. Yeah, I got you. yeah, I tell you. I'll tell you offline, but not, you know, I won't I'm not gonna because I'm not supposed to know. Ah, <laughs> yeah. So so tell me this. Well, you probably not gonna tell me. Would you have, if if the if the battle had happened, right? Would you have smoked them. I'm a damn sure try. Hell yeah! <laughs> I mean, I ain't, I'm not going up there to lose. Right, 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 right. And make a fool of my. That's one thing I'm not going to do. 
But it was an industry. It was an established artist. Yep. Uh, big, big, pretty big. Bigger wow. than me. Wow. Yep. Shout, out, shout out to ARP, man, because I know ARP is making them rounds, bro. He be putting out some crazy cards, man. He's he trying. Saying, he's a solid dude, man. I like it. He won't stop either. He's gonna. He's persistent. Yeah, he go, and he's going to see this interview, and he's going to be like, yo, Rand, you, sure? you sure? Yeah. <laughs> yo, Duffel, man, I really appreciate you pulling up and uh, gem after gem. What's, can I get the next project? What's the next project called? What should I, what should, what, I'm, 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 I'm picking which, which one I should put out next. Like, I don't know. Mm. Like, I got one with Rome Streets. I got an album. Like it's an album. I got an album with Rome Streets. Got an album with Rome Streets? Yeah. Wow. Um, got something with Static. I was planning on dropping with my artists. Um, it might be the Rome Streets joint. So I might come out with that Rome Streets joint. Oh, I don't know. I got options. It's good to have options. I was going to say, it's good that you got options, man. I got options, bro. And and, and you and you're staying in the lab. But, Every time you want Instagram, you're like, oh, I'm in the lab, I'm in the lab, I'm in the lab, working. Well, one thing, <laughs> I I spent my money, spend your money wisely. I, you know, I got a nice studio where I live, in my house. Same, same. So, yeah, yeah. So if you, you know, fuck, fuck the jewelry, man. <laughs> Go, you know, you, if, if, if you, uh, if you build houses, you need your tools, right? Yep. So you invest in good tools. You know, so that's another gem for you artists. Put a studio in your fucking house, man. And they're not expensive too. You don't. Uh, it doesn't have to be extravagant. Not be nothing crazy. You need Pro Tools. You need Pro Tools. You need a, a uh, inbox. Interface, interface, Pro Tools, mic, preamp, maybe a couple speakers. If you want to get like that, right? But you, you know, you got the interfaces that got the preamps built in, like the UAD joints and. Yep. You just spend a couple of hours, man. You can get you you get you a, a studio grade level type of setup in your house for like a couple thousand dollars. If that's the and then you you could do a couple hundred dollars if you just want if you just want to get some some bars off. Right, right, right. You know what I mean, so nah, yeah, that, definitely, definitely. It's crazy. Was, I, it's crazy the illusions that this game has, man. It's just have make sure you're honest. Work hard on your craft. Spend a little money on yourself to to be able to push that craft and educate yourself on the business because, and these these are like simple steps that people really don't know, bro. They really don't know that shit. It sounds like common sense, but it's not. I mean, you see what happened during the quarantine and pandemic. Mm -hmm. What happened? Motherfuckers was a lot of people that couldn't work. And no pivot game at all. Yeah. So the people who could work, they took advantage. Yep. And we all we all see who who took advantage of that. Nice. When they stopped working, I started working. That's it. You know what I mean? And that's yep. it. There's people that's reaping the benefits of that. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I seen Money Bag Yo. He's I seen he said that. Said, Man, motherfucker stopped working. I started. I started I started working harder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of people couldn't work. The offices slowed out, closed down, the studios closed down. If you if you if you sign to a major, you can't drop when you want to drop. So you know if the stu if the if the labels are closed, the building is closed down. Are you how you gonna drop, how, how you gonna drop music? You know you need an A and R. You gotta ask the A and R. Then then you gotta get pre approved for everything. Then everything gotta be uh, signed us. This person gotta sign off on this. Everything gotta be cleared. Everything on this and that. You got features. They gotta be cleared. Like it's a process, bro. Yeah. It's a process. There's a reason why, pardon me, there's, there's a reason why motherfuckers drop once every three years or some shit like that. It's yeah. a reason. Yeah, it's but a when reason. you're independent and you're in control and you're the boss, you do what you want. You None of drop, those problems. You drop six times like me. <laughs> That's crazy, man. I can't believe you still got three in the tuck. And the fourth one's probably getting made right now. Yeah, last night I was, I was you know, I, I can't even, I can't even divulge that information. I can't. <sighs> I'm seeing the tweets, bro. I'm seeing the tweets. And everybody, you know, everybody's going to see, you know, your yeah. socials on here too. And, and you know, that's what I love about this series because there are younger generation people that are, are you know, getting hip to different, you know, 
guys like yourself that are like, you know, have been killing it and they just might not know, right? So, you know what I mean? I encourage everybody, do your due diligence, check out all the Ransom's content, material, all the albums, the EPs, check it out because there's a reason why I wanted this killer on this platform to talk because it's not just the gems, the talent and the work speaks for itself, man. And again, Ransom, I really appreciate having you on the show, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate being on, man. Definitely um, appreciate the love from you, all the, you know, all the support from the fans and shit. That shit really keep me going. And it's, it's the reason I do this shit. It's the reason I do this shit. So not gonna lie, this is probably gonna be my last interview for a good couple years. Hey, so. it's an honor, it's an honor. Heavy is the head, man. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. Heavy is the head. Heavy is the head, go check it out. Right now. It's, I mean, I hate to say classic, man, because I, I drive, I don't know. It's just- You really, don't have to, everybody else is. It's just good, man. It's really fucking good, man. You so, this guy, he's too fucking modest, bro. <laughs> he says, it's good. It's fucking crazy. Everybody says, everybody says, you know, oh, you know, these words get tossed around a little, a little, a little bit too much for me. But, but there's been time to sit with it, bro, and and it's fucking, it's it's, it's fucking dope. That shit yeah. is dope. <laughs> that shit is. What, what's your what's your record? Tyranny. Tyranny is my record. Yeah, that's probably like the when I heard that beat, I was like, oh yeah, this is the yeah, one. That's the one. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm about to go in on this one. So yeah, now that's my joint right there. But I like I. It's probably the most listened to album that I that I listen to. But you gotta remember, I've been listening to it for months now. Right, right, right. Months, and I still, and it's still kind of, it's still kind of good to me. It's still good to me. It's still fresh. It's still like, oh, this shit is still. I still rock out to. I still work out to it. So it's it's a uh, it's standing the test of time so far. And it will. I think all my joints do, bro. I ain't gonna yep. lie. I think all my, my yes, 2020 from, I just, I just think all my shit stand the test of time and it will. I think people are not going to really get what I'm doing until maybe five, six years. We're like, yo, remember, remember that little run that motherfucking ransom went on? That shit, because who's going to do it? Who else is going to, who's going to replace that? Right. Who's going to, who, who could do that? You know, there's a lot of dope motherfuckers, trust me. It's a lot of dope, but who's gonna do what I'm doing? It's gotta be like, yeah, there's just too many elements involved that, you know. A lot of shit involved for you to, for you to, for you to execute. Compete. Yeah, compete. Yeah, at the level I'm executing that, it's, it's, it's a reason why motherfuckers are drop one album a year and it'd be special and then have to wait a whole nother year or another two years to drop something special again. Yeah. You know I mean? This is like, look at Kendrick, like, Every time he drop is special, but when he gonna drop? Been waiting for that. I'm giving you since 2020. I'm it's like what eight, nine projects. So, Crazy, bro. And not just regular shit. Just like yo, high level, high level execution with with the songs, stories, beats, rhymes, patterns, bars, entendres. Everything you need is in there. And that's a, there's a reason that, like I said, there's a reason why you're in the conversation, and and it should be it should have been sooner, but thank God that the conversation is happening now, man. Yeah, I appreciate it, brother. And I'm and I, you know I me, mean? I'm supporting all the way for the next ten projects, bro. So I'll be rooting for you, Ran. They'll be fire, trust me. Absolutely, yo! Thank you so much, man. Everybody, please make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment and all that stuff. Shout out to Ransom. This is another episode of Risk and Rewards. Peace, y'all.